Memorial Day 1993, the national championship game between Syracuse and North Carolina tied at 12 in the last minute when Syracuse begins a trademark fast break. It culminates in the game-winning goal by Matt Ryder with eight seconds to go. Syracuse beating the Tar Heels 13 to 12 and winning an unprecedented fifth national championship. The 1994 season begins with a rematch. North Carolina led by Dave Klarman with the highest winning percentage among Division I coaches. And Syracuse led by Hall of Famer Roy Simmons looking for a sixth national championship. Super Sports, a production of Adelphia Cable Communications presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. Today it's a battle between the top two teams in the rankings. North Carolina and Syracuse live from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse where the Orangemen are 80 and 5 over the years. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dan Horde, and we're delighted to begin our 1994 coverage of Syracuse University Lacrosse with today's great matchup between Syracuse and North Carolina. Once again this year, I'm joined by Dale Drypolcher. And Dale, this is typical for Syracuse. The lacrosse team does not begin with a cream puff. It's always a great game to begin the season. You know, it's almost unique even to lacrosse. Big games early is something lacrosse is known for. As a matter of fact, the Final Four is being repeated as Hopkins is playing Princeton this week. They don't duck anybody. And one thing it does, Dan, it lets you know where you stand, lets you know where you got to go to work, and it lets you know early. And it also exposes a lot of new players to a pressure cooker situation. A lot of the big names are gone for both of these teams, but the big names remain on the sidelines, beginning with North Carolina coach Dave Klarman. Dave Clarman's very intense, as you mentioned, highest winning percentage. He's a, he's a guy from Long Island, went down to North Carolina, recruits the same guy Syracuse does. He's known as a winner, and uh, he's really proven himself. He exudes a lot of confidence on the sidelines. He kind of has a little bit of a tough guy persona, and that's even evident when he discusses the keys to the game. We're going to try and attack the ground ball. We want to get the ground ball. And if we get the grounders, maybe we'll have more offensive opportunities get more shots and hopefully score more goals. But that's what we always try to do against everyone is win the ground ball battle. And Syracuse last year was one of the few teams that actually did out ground balls. And that's where it all starts. It's sort of, uh, you know, maybe like rebounds in basketball. You want to get them as much as you can. That gives you the ball. Well, Syracuse was able to win the battle of ground balls in the national championship game. But remember that North Carolina won the season opener last year between these two teams. 14 to 10. Roy Simmons Jr. remembers that, and he also remembers the great players that he lost from last year's team. Goalie Chris Saran, perhaps most notably the MVP of last year's championship tournament, but at Syracuse, the cupboard is never bare, and there are a lot of uh, newcomers that le we look forward to seeing in increased roles this season. Well, a lot of people say, uh, you know, they don't really rebuild. They just kind of reload it. It's a trite phrase, but it's actually true. It's almost like if you got a car, you have to overhaul it, or you have to just tune it up. And Syracuse seems to just tune up every year. They just have to put some new people in, get them, get them some chemistry, and get them working together. And that's what they're going to look for today, Dan. We spoke with Coach Simmons before the game. He talked about the great players he lost and the newcomers we can look forward to seeing. I think it's fairly obvious uh, by uh, who didn't graduate that our midfield and who returned, uh, our midfield's fairly strong. Close attack, totally wiped out and uh, totally a neophyte, with the exception of maybe uh, one starter in there, Casey Donegan, a senior, who hasn't started yet, but has been the fourth man in the ballgame. Defensive end of the field is still good, solid defensemen, but uh, taken out of their position from a long stick uh, defensive midfielder to close defense, but uh, with Chad Smith, Hans Schmidt, and uh, Rick Beersley, uh, we have uh, three familiar faces. The one uh, new spot on the field is in the cage, totally untested uh, in Division I ball, but certainly very tested in uh, uh, junior college ball, two-time national champion for Herkimer, but uh, it's a little faster lane we're in now. Well, Coach Simmons didn't use his name, but there he is, Alex Rozier, the successor to the great goaltender Chris Saran. Well, you know, they really like him. They, they think he's moved well. He's, he's big and he's fast. They like that. The question is, is he going to develop a chemistry with his defense? And as Coach Simmons said, this is a faster lane than he's used to. Mm -hmm. This isn't Tompkins Cortland Community College. This isn't Dassault Community College. This is North Carolina. So he's going to be tested early. And a different style from what we're told, more likely to stay in the cage and not likely to rush up field. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the starting lineups in a moment on Super Sports. 
Dan Horde and Dale Drypolcher from the Carrier Dome. Syracuse playing for the first time on the new turf and hoping it's uh, just as friendly as the old turf was. Syracuse 81-5 and in the Dome over the years. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for North Carolina. The attack, Greg Langhoff, Brendan Carey, and Merrill Turnbull. The midfield, Ryan Wade, a great player back from last year's team, Usman Green, and Jason Wade. At defense, Steve Schreiber, John Fox, and Chuck Bresci. And the goalie back from last year's team, Gary Lehrman. He took over as a freshman after Billy Day went out with an injury last year and did a great job in getting Carolina to the championship game. Now taking a look at the starting lineup for Syracuse, a new attack, Casey Dunnigan, Jim Morrissey, and Matt Doyle. Dunnigan did play quite a bit last year, but was not a starter. Check out that midfield, all three All-Americas, Roy Colsey, Charlie Lockwood, and Dom Finn. The face-off specialist is new, Dave Signor. At defense, Chad Smith, one of the captains, Hans Schmidt, and second-team All-American, Rick Beardsley. And the new goalie in 94, Alex Rozier, a transfer from Herkimer Community College, where he won two JUCO National Championships. Dale, let's take a look at how these teams stacked up statistically last season. Well, you, you know, you look at it and you say, is, is it, does it mean anything for this year? Well, I'll tell you one thing. You look at the, the goals. They do score a lot. These teams like to run. They're similar offensive style. They like to pick that ball up and go down and score the fast break. Saves, obviously Lerman is back. Uh, that doesn't make any difference for Syracuse right now. Man up goals, 40%, pretty even. Look for an up-tempo game. Look for them. As Coach Carmen said, the guy who gets the ground ball, the team that can control that, can start the fast break, get stuff going. He feels that's going to be the key. Dave Klarman, 42-5 and five after three seasons at North Carolina. Won a national championship his first year, and there are a couple of Roy Simmons. Roy Jr. and Roy the Fourth. Roy beginning his 23rd year at Syracuse. What a remarkable all-time record, 231 and 82. It's remarkable that uh, Roy the Fourth, there's uh, all this noise and all this attention. He's being a real good little guy. Let's take a look back at Syracuse's national championship schedule and results from last season. The big shocker, of course, I don't think anybody thought that they could go down to Carolina, especially with Carolina being outdoors early and really win the game. It's, it's, it's frosting on the cake if you do, but as we said at the Open, they don't duck anybody. The shocker last year, Dan, was Loyola. Uh, they didn't look good at Loyola. Uh, they, they lost in overtime. People were a little concerned, but as you can see after that, it's all W's. And uh, the championship game, obviously, we, we showed a little bit from that. Uh, did a great job, but uh, that was the low point. Uh, the rest of it was it was tough, but they uh, pulled off every game, and you can look at the scoring, a lot of scoring from Syracuse. Well, Dave Klarman, much like Roy Simmons, has a lot of talent to try to replace from his national runner-up team last year. Fifteen lettermen are gone, including a couple of great attack men, John Webster and Steve Spears. Local guys from this area. There's Roy three. <laughs> and Roy one is in the press box. They are all in attendance watching Syracuse open the 1994 season. North Carolina is one of very few teams to actually win a game here at the Dome. Four teams have done it. North Carolina did it once in the national semis back in 1991. One of the things that you know about Carolina is they generally have good face-off people. In Syracuse, another area where they're going to start with a relative unknown in Signor, they've got three or four other guys, uh, but we'll see Signor first. Over half of Carolina's team has never played college lacrosse before, but like Syracuse, a lot of guys have a lot of experience and they have played against the second best team in the country in practice, so it's not like they don't have any skills. Syracuse has a new look in many ways. There is new goalie Alex Rozier, and one of the other new things you might notice early is the fact that Syracuse is wearing blue shorts right. after traditionally wearing orange with white tops at home. Quite a quite a buzz from the crowd. Is the, I think the jury is still out deciding whether that's... Uh, <laughs> That's the uh, color that they like, but Syracuse is doing it. And uh, a little change of pace. Ryan Wade out to face off for Carolina, number 19, against Signor. 
Signor, a West Genesee High School product who spent the last couple of years at Herkimer Community College yep. and was the Juco Player of the Year. And he just made a, a first game nervous mistake. He started long before the whistle, so Syracuse gives up possession right away. Ryan Wade cradling with the ball. He is definitely a threat to score anytime he has it in his cross. Very talented player. Merrill Turnbull now working it behind the cage. This is Brendan Carey being checked by Hans Schmid. Schmid with a takeaway. And he races upfield for Syracuse. Looking for Charlie Lockwood in the middle of the field. Schmid now upfield. Syracuse with the ball in good position. This is Casey Dunnigan behind the cage. He has stepped into that feeder's role that Jamie Archer performed so well last year. Slow whistle, two flags down. I think one is offsides against uh, Carolina, so otherwise it would have been a whistle, but there's another one down further, which I'm not sure that is. Let's check and see. Bill Ellis, the official on the far side, made the call. Two men down, so Syracuse is going to be the recipients. Their first man-up situation is two men down. Watch Schmidt over the, the top, mm. takes it away from Wade. That's a little dangerous sometimes, but he looks very comfortable doing it. He's a defensive guy that played defensive midi last year. He's back to his normal position. You see, there should be two guys in the box. Yes, now they're going to move one more out. So Syracuse has a man-up situation with 50 seconds gone in the first quarter, and Carolina, two men down, will use a zone. Zone it up as you've got to look at Jason Sanders in the box. Dom Finn, first team All-America the last two years, had the ball briefly. Now it's Charlie Lockwood to Finn. A couple of newcomers are also in in this two-man up situation for Syracuse. Rob Cavavit, a highly touted freshman, and Brian Eisenberg. That's Cavavit. He lost the ball. North Carolina comes away. Now they're, they're Syracuse is man up. They want to get the ball and oh, that'll stop it. Let's see what the call is. A ward or a push? push. So that'll be a technical foul against Syracuse. Brian Eisenberg, Eisenberg nailed for the penalty. Right. So he's in the box and there's still two guys in the box for Carolina. I don't know how much time is left in the 30 second penalty. The two penalties, it's both for 30 seconds. So they will get two men out in a second. Right now, Syracuse play man-to-man -man on the ball and be ready to pick up as they come in out of the box. It's Green, the mini, number 26 in, and now they're going to change, so they want to get some different personnel in as Carolina sends in Langoff, number four. Now they've got everybody in. Syracuse going to match up here man for man as they pick everybody up that comes in. 19 also in. Ryan Wade, so... They swing the ball out. Syracuse has now gotten rid of that penalty. And the first shot by Jason Wade results in a goal. Wade beating Alex Rozier and giving North Carolina the 1 0 lead. Watch Rozier. He's going to be facing a left handed shot and it just right at his stick and he lost it. So the first shot for Rozier goes in. And you can see on the replay right there, right stick side, the left hand shot by number 43, Jason Wade. So it's one nothing. And difficult to fault Rozier there. That was a wide open opportunity well, for Jason Wade. And, and also, you know when you see those happen a lot, Dan, it's just when the penalty ex expires, which is what happened, and people are still looking around to see who picks up whom, and right there you get up a goal. Right now, Syracuse not able to control this faceoff, so they are 0 for 2 in the faceoff department. Jude Collins with the ball, Mark Fietta keeping an eye on him, and North Carolina will set up. John Spears, younger brother, the great Steve Spears, he has the ball. They're stacking people up and just doing one-on-one -on -one from behind. Now they get a cutter from the, the top, and they lose the ball momentarily, but Carolina loses it. Han Schmidt, poor pass. That's going to cost Syracuse possession. Put a lot of bounds right in front of Carolina bench. Mid trying to fire up field to Dave Signor. Roy Simmons perhaps a bit concerned with the early going. His team down 1-0. Yeah, you can tell they're uh, they're into it. <laughs> little sideline banter as the uh, ball has had to be brought over from the Carolina side. 
John Spears has it. Looks like he will initiate uh, the offense from the opposite side that he started last time. Runs in behind the cage. It's Toby Price on him for Syracuse. They double, ball down. Chad Smith was the big stick who came in on the double team, and Syracuse gets it. Chad Smith, a big stick midi last year, now playing close defense for Syracuse. A guy who had a sinus infection, they thought he might not be able to play. I said, that must be some sinus infection. It must have been very serious, but he's back, and he makes a long pass over on the far side to Schmidt. There were complications for Chad Smith that were actually life-threatening, and it's, it's terrific to be able to see him back in action. Roy Colsey fires Syracuse's first shot and scores, and we're tied at one at the 11.51 mark of the first period. Colsey from the midfield, all on the re the start off of Schmidt getting the ball and getting it upfield, and they lose him, not able to get up. You can't get a stick on him, and uh, he just unmolested, takes a left-hand shot, not particularly hard, but well-placed, and Colsey ties it at one. Colsey was second on the team in goals last year, and this faceoff is won by Dave Signor. Well, Signor has got to get rid of the butterflies. He's uh, got the faceoff, lost the ball. It's down on the ground. And Carolina comes away. One of those ground balls Clarman was talking about. Fast break. Beardsley over to help out. Rozier gets it out. Pass open. A little problem clearing that ball there. He might have, he's got four seconds. He probably should have waited a little bit and get a break. Now they got a jump. Shot high by Langoff, number four. And a lot on that shot by Langoff. Here's Alex Rozier. Butterflies have to be gone by now. The game well, tied at one. You'd hope, wouldn't you? And he did, uh, maybe should have kept the ball just a little longer there to, to find out exactly where everybody was going to be. Passed uh, into a bit of a crowd. Brendan Carey gets around Schmidt, but once again, Hans is able to make the takeaway, and he races upfield. He's got good legs, you can see, for a defenseman. He just gets rid of the ball and makes a nice pass. And he's a guy who had major knee surgery two years ago. Colsey looking for his second goal, fires high, and Dunnigan races after it to ensure that Syracuse will hold on to the ball. In lacrosse, if you are closest after a shot to where the ball goes out of bounds, whoever's closest gets it, and you can get it back, and that's exactly what happened to Syracuse. Now Donegan works from the attack. Matt Doyle. Oh, nice Good dodge. spin move, and Doyle scores. And does a little mugging for the crowd after scoring. Matt Doyle on the board for the first time in 94, and Syracuse has its first lead 2-1. to one. Jason Sanders is on him. Watch the move Doyle makes. Watch, he's left-handed. He takes him, rolls him. He took Sanders. Sanders went too far with him. Now he takes the right-hand shot. But you see, Sanders did not stay with him, stick to stick. Watch him overcommit to the outside, the far side, and he comes back with the other hand, Dan, and makes it 2-1. I remember Matt Doyle last year more for his hard hits right. than his moves and his stick work, but he looked terrific scoring that goal. Syracuse gets that on the wing uh, on the face-off as... Uh, Fietta comes in, so they even up the faceoffs at two apiece. Fietta with the ball. He had two goals in the national championship game against North Carolina and four goals in the final four. Charlie Lockwood. Now he's going to get a lot of attention. Lockwood's shot is high. Charlie with such a great move, the defender lost his stick. Yeah. Bresci was on him, and now they're going to bring the ball in from behind. Fiatta has it. Syracuse with twice as many shots as North Carolina in the early going. Paul Sullivan coming back from a knee injury. Sullivan's pass off the mark, and this one goes over the sideline, meaning North Carolina gets it. Forced the pass a little bit. You know, it's like it's like a guy inside uh, in the paint for basketball, and you see some people there, and you still think you can make the pass. Sometimes you can, but sometimes you lose it like that. So Syracuse will lose possession. As we looked at uh, Lerman, the goalie, he's uh, he's got to be... Thinking a little bit too. Syracuse, what? Two? Uh, how many shots did we check on? Five that? shots. Five shots, two goals. North Carolina trying to clear. Charlie Lockwood applied the hit, but it did not result in the clearing of the ball. They got a little unsettled situation here, and they get another goal. Jason Wade with his second goal of the game. And North Carolina quickly ties it at two. 
Jason Wade, 43, takes the ball left-handed, then he goes right-handed, makes a move, double-teamed, and he just beats him stick side, stick high, and Rozier's reaction, not quite there on that. So Wade brings up the tie. Rozier still looking for his first save. Signor can't control it. Carolina does. Syracuse's top two faceoff men from last year are gone. Andy Pusha and Bob Fazy. Spreading Syracuse out here. And Rozier misses that. Seemed to be in position, and the ball somehow squirted through for the goal. I think he hit it, and he did not control it. We can see on the replay. They're going to give the goal to Eisenberg. Let's see. There's the shot. No, I just beat him cleanly. Well, it was deflected by uh, Chad Smith. It right. hit Smith, and that confused Let's see Rozier. It. Well, he actually was blocked. You're right. I, I don't know. I didn't see it hit him, but at any rate, Chad Smith was in front of his goalie. His goalie could not see it, and it goes to 3-2. We told you that these teams are high scoring. There's only six minutes gone, and it's 3-2. Uh, Spencer Deering with his first goal. Jason Wade has the other two, and Carolina wins another faceoff. A wide-open opportunity, and the shot goes wide. Collins uh, got a jump, and he went down the... The left side, Beardsley slid over to try to to try to pick up, and uh, we got there just in time to make the shot go a little wide. They did not really get a shot on the cage. Good shot on the cage. That's a ward. So they're going to call number four Langoff for a ward, which means that uh, he put that arm up and pushed off the defensive man's stick. You can't do that. And that will cost a possession. Syracuse will have to clear a long pass over to Schmidt. They seem to like that. And Schmidt clears. Now looking to give it up, start the offense, and Roy Colsey has it for Syracuse. Roy Colsey, very strong. He is the strongest of the Syracuse midfielders. Now Dom Finn, perhaps the quickest. Back to Colsey, who will crank it up. Saved by Lerman. Nice jump and slide there for Carolina. They jumped, double teamed, and then slid back over after they lost the ball. And Syracuse, not able to capitalize, loses it. And now it's Carolina on the attack. Spencer Deering with it. He has scored once. Around behind the cage. Where the ball is controlled by Mark Phillips. Chad Smith knocks it out of his cross. Phillips races after it. Smith all over him. That's a check and a half. That's a check and a half. Whoa! He let him. He knocked it down and went over to get it. <laughs> he, he knocked the stick out of his hand again. Nice check by Chad Smith. Now, Syracuse problem is that on that last one, when they double teamed Colsey, and that left a man open. They got the ball back to him. Nice defensive slide by Carolina, Dan, and they uh, they just played catch with the goalie. They hit him right in the stick. Mark Phillips, who lost the ball there, was just yanked out. You saw him run to the sideline. Neither team having much trouble clearing thus far. And as I say that, yeah. North Carolina nearly Schmidt successful, again. but Schmidt once again emerges through the pack. Offside's got to be on Carolina. Flag is down, so Syracuse can take an opportunity here and get a shot off, and then we'll get the ball back and should be up a man, but let's see what they do. Colsey kind of powers by. Oh, that's another one. That was a skull shot. So that should be a double penalty here. Two guys will be out, I believe. Let's check. I know Colsey got mugged there. This is a this is a skull dunter. Watch, not that one. There it is. Oh, they got him on both sides. That's a skull dunter. <laughs> <laughs> so they are two men down because they were offsides, and this is Syracuse had the second situation. They've had two men advantage. They did not score the last time. In that situation. Not, not much padding is required in lacrosse, but the helmet is, thankfully. Yes, right. Now, Syracuse has got 30 seconds. There are two men up for 30 seconds, and then there'll be one man up for the rest of the time. So they're going to be patient. Oh, nice move. Charlie Lockwood no. with a fantastic pass. And he was in the crease. So that'll cost him possession. So 
they're still, they should double the ball because they're two men up still. But uh, nice job by the goalie, Lerman. Mm. Now they're just going to cheap it. Rozier let it uh, go out of bounds, but Syracuse will now have to clear from their own end. So that'll help get some time off that 30-second penalty. I'm checking to see how many guys are in the box. Well, you can see Clarman's in the box trying to get a guy in, trying to get a guy out. Syracuse going to lose the ball again. That ground ball Clarman talked about, this is a classic example of the team that gets the ground balls gets the advantage. Fast break. Brendan Carey cranked up the shot and fired wide. North Carolina. North Carolina called for offsides again. They've had, uh, it's their third offside penalty. Shots up to six apiece, but Syracuse, the last couple of shots have not been good, and there's going to be a timeout. Dave Klarman uh, showing that fire we talked about. Klarman, a former North Carolina player. From Long Island, went to Nassau Community College, I believe. And he's got to be pleased so far with a couple of things. First of all, his goalie's been playing pretty well. And now they're going to check a stick here. They're checking sticks here for, I'm not sure whether it's a Now they're required at the end of the quarter, but this is not the end of the quarter. Now there's 635 left, and they are checking a stick. Perhaps it was a request. Hmm. Checking the length of that stick. No, I guess they did it now. Uh, they checked both uh, both teams, one guy from each team, so that was uh, done now. Shades of uh, last year's Stanley Cup Finals when the Kings lost because they had a curve stick. It, it curved by itself, right? <laughs> well, you can see the goalies have not uh, been too successful thus far. North Carolina with one save, Syracuse with none. He actually got his, uh, on, the, on that last one, I think... Uh, Technically not a save, but I think he played it very well. Good mm. body position, and Syracuse has had uh, two men up. Now they are even. There's nobody in the box. So Syracuse will clear. Colsey going to run it up. Colsey using his strength to knock a defender to the ground, and he races upfield. Dom Finn breaking ahead. Colsey. Decided not to try and get it to him. Now the behind the back pass to Donegan behind the cage. Fires Nobody in there. Donegan made a bad pass. And now Carolina picks up that ground ball that Clarman talked about. Fast break. Four on three. Unsettled situation. Good defense there by Chad Smith. So far he has played a whale of a game along with Hans Schmidt mm -hmm. clearing the ball. But uh, and Schmidt on a couple of takeaways. But... A lot of uh, offense for Carolina, and they are getting, Dan, those ground balls, and Syracuse making some poor passes early. Roy Simmons getting some substitutes in. Paul Sullivan is in. Mark Fietta is in. Carolina with the ball, leading 3-2. About five and a half minutes left in the first period. Some of this stuff is early season stuff. That's, uh, you know... It happens every year if you watch lacrosse, Syracuse lacrosse, especially being indoors all the time. It doesn't, it's not bad, obviously, but uh, Carolina's been out a little bit more, so ball taken away. Indoors and not on a full field because right. the basketball court has been set up. Nice look, a couple of big sticks out here. Rick Beardsley to Casey Donegan. Beardsley will stick around, too. He's not, uh, he's not shy about being there with that six-foot stick. Donegan running a little bit of... Business behind, looking for a cutter. That's uh, Brushy on him. Brushy, 34, did a pretty good job. They bring the ball back. Beardsley goes back over, and he lets Lockwood come back and play a little offense. So Charlie Lockwood comes over. Low shot, back up, Syracuse ball. Mark Fietta took the shot. He had 13 goals last year, his sophomore year, out of Jordan Elbridge. Charlie Lockwood, guarded by Ryan Wade. Lockwood running circles around him. Charlie shoots and scores. Burning Ryan Wade to tie it at three. Remember last year, it seemed like he went forever without getting the goal, but the laser puts a nice one in. Look at the moves he makes. You know, one of the things he says has helped him this year is 
is playing basketball and uh, and trying to guard some of those Syracuse basketball players. Look at the moves. He made about six different lane shifts. He takes a nice left-hand shot as uh, just a great move. And he is. He's been a walk-on and played, shot some three-point shots. That's right. Charlie Lockwood beating Ryan Wade there. And Wade was the defender trying to uh, cover him. And they will be the two college players on the national team this summer. The only two. Syracuse uh, controlled the ball momentarily. They lose it on uh, the ground ball situation off the face. Pass back is knocked down alertly by 27. Christian Fotopoulos, the uh, big stick guy. Christian Fotopoulos, I should say. John Spears has the ball for North Carolina. Merrill Turnbull finding Brendan Carey. They work it around. Four minutes left in the first. The game tied at three. Got a stick on it. So Rozier gets his stick on it. Working out the butterflies as you look at the Carolina midfielder. Jude Collins. This is Merrill Turnbull. Chad Smith applying the uh -oh. pressure. Look at those checks. Use the back side of the stick. He used a handle. That's a slash. On North Carolina, Syracuse with the ball. The penalty will not go into effect until Carolina comes up with it, if Carolina comes up with it. Now they'll lose it. Put Carolina the was able to uh, touch it, and that put the penalty into effect. I was just going to say Turnbull. That was a frustration slash. Mm -hmm. There he is. Well, you won't see him now. He's going to the bench. There he 12 right there. But uh, Smith picked his pocket, hit him with the back handle of the stick, took the ball away, and Turnbull just wailed on his arm all the way down. You're going to watch it right there. See the back side of the stick, then the other side? He's amazing. Now look at this. You cannot hit the free arm. He, he took three shots on the shoulder. It tells you what, the, you know, you see these guys, you don't hear it until you see it on the replay. Great shot, guys, on the replay. So Syracuse is the beneficiaries of uh, the third man up situation. Actually, they've been two men up for the two previous mm -hmm. situations and have not been able to convert. Once they didn't get a shot, the other time Dom Finn went into the uh, crease. Low shot, little grass burner. Look at Roy Colsey who has scored one of the three Syracuse goals. Now it's Dom Finn. Well, Finn will shoot, right and Finn scores. Dom Finn on the board, and all three Syracuse midfielders, the All-Americans who are back, Colsey, Lockwood, and Finn have scored in the first quarter. They had one guy chasing the ball in a, in a zone defense behind, but nobody picked him up. Watch, Finn just says there's nobody there, nobody on the goal mouth, and uh, he had no chance. Lerman had no chance on that. You see him just come around? Nobody on the ball. They let the man with the ball go and he came from behind so Dom Finn up with a goal number four for Syracuse and Syracuse not able to get a face off lately been losing the ground balls look at the hustle there you get the laser comes in and comes up with a face off Charlie Lockwood racing toward the cage oh and his pass is a little bit wide of the mark and goes over the sideline one of those things that uh, as we talked about uh, that's not a mistake you'll make three or four games in or even the sh your second game but in the first game coach Simmons knows that you're going to get some errant passes and that's exactly what happened there the timing isn't down the chemistry's not there North Carolina trying to clear and the Tar Heels are successful basically a one man effort by Kyle Durkee Syracuse generally running a Man-to-man -man defense. They've been known to throw in a zone on occasion, but not for situations. Right now, man-to-man. -man. Carolina. Kyle Durkee has it. Carolina showing some patience here. A little more than two minutes left in the first. Toby Price, short stick defender on him. Good defensive pressure by Price. And the good crowd recognizes it here at the Dome. Look Jason like Sanders with a bounce shot. It goes over the cage. And right there to be closest to it, Brendan Carey. They were kind of set up in a 1-4-1. One, one. You had one guy out on the top, four guys across the, about 10 yards out from the goal, and one guy as a backup. So 
That was what they're running. They look to be running it again. Now they're going to change a little bit. They get the ball behind. You see the men stacked up. Now they're going to run cutters from the top. Watch them cut towards the cage. Nice check. Han Schmidt again. Ball down. Nice recovery by Jim Morrissey. Good point. Morrissey right where he needed to be to come up with a big ground ball because the ball was down. Syracuse is going to take the time and they're going to push it. They push it. And a shot and a goal by Toby Price. And Syracuse has its first two goal lead, five to three. That's called doing it on both ends of the field. Toby Price, number 12, playing defense. Toby Price, number 12, playing offense as he beats 21, Durkee, and gets Syracuse back in the lead by two. Comes back around, left hand shot. But uh, Dan, that's something playing. That, that's lacrosse. Playing down both ends, running down and getting a goal. Syracuse loses another faceoff. Let's check that faceoff stats. We'll check it out for you. 6-3, North Carolina. 6-3, yes, I was going to say. They have not had one in a while. I wasn't sure exactly how many. Save, rebound, goal. Uh, Brendan Carey. Now, you know what I saw here? It was a great shot by Carey, but Rozier lost his composure. Watch what happens. This is a tough one. There's no doubt about it. He jumped at the midfield. Midfielder got beat. Dave Signor got beat out there. Now there's the behind the back shot. Rozier's on his knees. Watch. See that right there? No. That's a, that's a, that's a problem because, you know, Saran, they just kind of get up and shake it off. And you, you got to come back. You cannot lose your composure. If they see that, Carolina knows they got you guessing, they got you running. And they have been putting a lot of pressure on. Syracuse tried a new man on the faceoff there, and Jody Ferguson helped Syracuse oh. get the ball. Slow roller, and he just gets in the crease. Is that Donigan withholding the ball from play? So that'll cost uh, the ball as uh, Donigan on his knees legally with a stick in the crease. You can go in there with your stick, but now he's withholding. See, he, he wouldn't let the goalie stick in on it. That's withholding the ball from play. Syracuse pushes, but... Uh, Able to clear, Carolina. Ryan Wade with the ball for Carolina. The Tar Heels looking to tie. Hung his stick. Wittick knocked it free. Wittick races after it. Good hustle by Wittick. Let's see what the call is. No, stays Carolina. Wasn't a shot. Nope. Just, you're never sure whether they say they'd knock off somebody's foot or whose stick was it off, so... It stays Carolina ball. Now, Rozier's got to get that composure back. Shot, save. He sent that one high. Jason Wade with a great opportunity. So and Rozier was there. Yeah, a close in shot. And that's those are the ones you got to be stick on stick because when they're close, you've got to be right where they are. Oh, nice check by Colsey. Usman Green with the ball for North Carolina. Green working to the right hand. Saved by Rozier. On Schmidt with it. Schmidt lost it trying to pass. He goes to the ground with Green. The ball still loose on the turf, and Carolina has it. Big ground ball. Unsettled situation, but Beardsley after it. And the quarter's going to end like that. The quarter ends with Syracuse in the lead, and what a first quarter to begin the 94 season. I score at the end of one, Syracuse five and North Carolina four. Dan Hoyt and Dale Drypolcher back at the dome. Flip that score around. It's Syracuse five, North Carolina four at the end of one quarter. Dave Clarman smiling on the sideline. That's an unusual shot. Put that, hold it, freeze it. <laughs> Syracuse Signor. face off, Signor. Yep. Doyle, nice spin move. And Doyle backs away a bit. Nice look across the field and a shot in the goal. Signor with the first goal as an Orangeman. And Syracuse is on top by two, six to four. Signor out of West Genesee in Herkimer Community College. Took a nice shot. Doing the face-off duty, doing some scoring. Signor was... 
getting beaten early on the face-offs. The last face-off of the first quarter was handled by freshman Jody Ferguson, and then Sig Signor was back there for the first face-off of the second. I wonder if that was a little bit of a signal. Try to improve his play there, and it certainly paid off. He got the face off and ultimately the goal. Just made a mistake there, though, not, not move before the whistle and, and give up an uncontested face off. Look at those ground balls. Uh, I think it's 10 to 8 in favor of Syracuse. I have to say that the key ground balls have gone to Carolina, some of them off of face offs. But right now, Carolina ball. Syracuse leading 6 4. We're early in the second quarter. Spears ball down. Poor pass by Carolina by Spears. And picked up on a dead run by Syracuse. Great hustle there by Greg Langhoff to knock it away. Syracuse came up with it again, at least briefly. Fotopoulos, the big stick midfielder, 27 was the guy. And after all that, Donegan couldn't save the ball. But Fotopoulos, nice job on the big stick as he picked up a ground ball. You don't know how difficult it is to pick up one of those little tiny balls, one of those big sticks. There's the stats, man up goals, Syracuse one of three, and uh, a couple of those were two men up, ground balls 10 to eight in favor of Syracuse. The rest of it kind of speaks for itself, shots 12 to 11, very close, clears 10 to nine. Syracuse a little trouble early clearing the ball, but uh, it has seemed to have settled down now and both teams clearing well. Spencer Deering, round behind the cage to Brendan Carey. On Schmidt, watching him. Carey gets it back. Looks like Carolina is keeping the ball away from whomever is being guarded by Rick Beardsley. You know, Beardsley is supposed to be the takeaway guy, and uh, they just had, well, he's going to get him maybe a hold. This could be a hold. Let's see what they're going to give him. Chad Smith obviously pleading his case. Yeah, they're going to give him a hold. I knew they would. There he is. Watch. He's going to go up over the head. But it's not a skull splitter. It's just a just kind of a hold. See, that's a in, in, in Division One. That's just a hold. High school, they might give you on the head. <laughs> right there, that's just the price of doing business. So, 30 seconds for holding. So, another man up opportunity. Number two for Carolina. They did not convert on the first. Syracuse was excellent last year in these situations. Absolutely, they were. Yeah. Of course, Chris Saran had a lot to do with that. He was kind of a box with one guy in the middle with a stick up. That's Beardsley. And they just shift as the ball moves. The key on a man up is to be able to change the direction of the ball quickly and get a shooting lane. Takes a one hopper, and it uh, doesn't go. So I think he got a stick on it. So now they're going to get that ball and whip it around again. Now they do a little one-on-one, -on -one, have the back door, but the ball not cleanly passed. Rozier Mark. takes his time, gets the ball out to his wing defenseman, looks upfield. Sophomore Mike Smiley, who's come in, the big 6'6 kid, was the player who came up with that ball back in the defensive oh, end. Rick Beardsley with a big stick scores, and Syracuse leads 7-4. And they're going to throw a penalty on him, too. He's going to score, but you can't throw your stick. Uh, no goal? Well, they, I thought it was uh, no goal. Okay. offside against Syracuse yep. is going to be the call. Right, you can't score if you're offside, no doubt about it. And I thought the flag went because after Beardsley scored the goal, his stick flew, and I thought that they would call him for that. Uh, this is this is this is what I like about lacrosse. Now they get to argue and discuss. It's kind of a unique sport. So it's still 6-4 Syracuse. Still 6-4 and Syracuse is down a man. Rick Beardsley, who had that goal taken away, actually has already gone through a couple of sticks in this game where he's on his second stick. He bent his first one in the first and was out for a while. So it's a 30-second offside. They're looking for the sneak man behind. There he is. Nope. Green. Left Wade shot. shoots. Alex Rozier in say, good position. That wasn't close to the cage, actually. It was out, but he was good reaction mm -hmm. for Rozier. 
Now Syracuse, now they're even. Now here's where you have to watch it. Here's where you often get a score. Wade's shot was knocked down before it got to Rozier. Rozier runs out from behind the cage. Ball still loose on the turf. Carolina has it. Rozier has to hustle to get back in front of the net. That's Green. a key. That was a key ground ball. Oh, now there's his takeaway. Whittick. Whittick ball back down again. <laughs> and a blatant hold against Syracuse. No doubt about that one on Mark Fietta. Takedown. Fietta, two points. <laughs> Terry Cullen makes the call. The official. A pair of nines out there. That's a carry. Yeah! Just like bringing down a tree. So, Fietta, good sportsmanship. Not a bad idea to endear yourself to the officials. That's a 30-second penalty for holding. What? Excessive holding? Oh, you can, yeah. <laughs> you know, some of these penalties, for example, slashing at most is a one-minute penalty, but if you read the book, it says you can give one to, one to three minutes if you wish. And, and, and I think Coach Simmons wants a discussion, too. Now he's on the field. He was out of the coach's box. And assistant coach John Desco, the longtime assistant, pulling Simmons back into the huddle before this gets out of hand. Syracuse is going to have to kill off its third straight penalty. Roy Simmons using one of Syracuse's two timeouts for the first half to talk about this situation. I don't know exactly what they called on Simmons. The, they, they did throw the, depends on whether he maligned him or anything. I'm sure he didn't. But here's what happened. Now, Usman Green loses the ball. Now the ball is taken by Syracuse. They get the ball up. But now watch when he gets the ball, with number nine, that's Carey. They said excessive holding I, and gave him a minute. Holding is usually 30 seconds. I, A second penalty called against Syracuse. The what? one minute excessive holding and <laughs> couldn't tell what the 30 second penalty was. But Just a general penalty. Just a general kind of a general penalty for too many men on the field. There you go. That was 30 seconds. So now they'll have to be down at least 30 seconds. <laughs> Now they get the old rule books out. I, I must say, and I'm not saying it's it's wrong, I have never had a call, seen a call of excessive holding. Save! Got a stick on that. Rozier tapping the, the pipes, yep. and I think that shot hit the pipe. They say it did hit the pipe, so not a save. As far as he's concerned, the pipe. <laughs> Rozier blessing the pipe. That's right. Oh, yeah, guy cuts through the middle. Beardsley with it for Syracuse. Lost it momentarily. Recovers. Oh, not a, not a good pass because I, I don't know whether Rozier thought he should have it. Long pass. Ball loose on the turf. There's the ground. Carolina has it. Yep. The contested ground balls are going to Carolina. Right. There you go. Loose again. This time Syracuse has it. Wittick. Wittick gets it taken away. It's stripped from behind by Merrill Turnbull. And Turnbull still got it, number 12. He flips it off. To Wade. Wade shoots wide. Syracuse has it. Crowd's into it. And, well, after, should, uh, and after a little bit of a spotty start, Alex Rozier's been terrific. Yeah, he, you know, I, I saw the one where... It hit the pipe, but the point was his body was moving in the right direction. He had everything there, and uh, I thought he looked good on that. Last few times, it seems he's anticipated where the shot is going to be coming from. Well, it hasn't always been a save, but sometimes he's in a position perhaps to force the shot to go wide. You've you got to give him some style points. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes a goalie who blocks the angle well will force the shooter to fire it wide. Absolutely. He Ball. doesn't get credit for the save, but had something to do with it. Ground ball up to Carolina again. A Turnbull as they settle in Beardsley out on the ball nice bit of defense there Dom Finn applying the hit yeah Feller Felter slipping and sliding Langhoff with it 
Yeah, Felter was the guy, 22, who had the ball before for Carolina. Now John Spears out of Fayetteville Manley is high with the ball for North Carolina. Brian Eisenberg, oh, he got the beat. defender. Knocked down before it got to the cage. Syracuse gets it. Yeah, good hustle. Smith, good hustle, got over to that sideline. That was still a shot. And uh, the Carolina man headed for the sideline. But that guy right there, Chad Smith, got there before him and was the closest man to the ball, went out of bounds. And one thing I've noticed, they are putting a lot of pressure on Syracuse in the clears, I think, knowing that Syracuse has some problems getting out, getting the full field. So the clearing is what suffers early. Carolina's gone more than five minutes without scoring. Both teams, actually. After that fast-paced first quarter. Nice put down. Colsey stays with it. Donegan comes up with a loose ball. Casey shoots. Bound shot. Goes past the cage. And good hustle by Syracuse to be closest. You know, they got that rule where you have to have 10 seconds to... <laughs> I don't think they're going to call it today. These guys just up and down the field. It has not even been close to being something you would have to consider as an official. Ten seconds to get it out of the first quarter of the field. Right. Oh. Doyle with an air gate or Sky Rider style goal. Subway gate. <laughs> So Doyle, watch from behind, from behind. Doyle out of Elmont, New York. Watch, in the air. He leaves in the air. Whoa. Real close. Spectacular goal by Doyle. And Syracuse is on top 7-4. That can be a discouraging one for the goalie. As Lerman had no, uh, no chance to stop that. Looked like his foot might have... Might have touched down a little bit before, but it was a great, great job by Doyle. And he unofficially becomes the third player for Syracuse to score that kind of goal. Uh, Syracuse is going to be down for a slash. Looks like there you one go. too many passes there yeah. by North Carolina. Let's see what they give him. Yeah, they're going to give him a slash. Mark Phillips. 29 from Carolina. Watch. Whoa. He's the one that got hit. That was 11. That's Sanders. They've got the ball down to number 29, Phillips, but he dropped it. And uh, so Signor is going to be down for a slash. So Syracuse with that. Kind of a moving box with Beardsley in the middle, 47, as they slide as Carolina moves the ball on their extra man. Now they got a cutter comes through. Beardsley has to let the cutter go. Wade shoots, Rozier saves. And completes a great upfield pass to Chad Smith. Smith a threat to score, he shoots. And he had backup. Wide. Good backup, Syracuse. As it was a big long stick and a big long shot backed up by Doyle and Doyle's going to start the ball from behind but Charlie Lockwood's in and he's snuck in a little bit now nah, they found him as he came in from the bench area he gets picked up by Ryan Wade Donegan with a ball good pressure applied by Carolina Donegan spins forward loses it recovered by Finn but here comes Ryan Wade. A little unsettled defense gets back at the sticks up to cut the passing lanes down. And Lockwood knocks the ball down. Probably a non-possession push. Well, it was going to be a non-possession push. Let's see what he calls. Yeah, they gave him a push. Now so there's the good check, but... Let's see. Yeah, that wasn't the foul. That was the foul right there. Hey, nice fall. <laughs> yeah, he kind of. It's kind of like drawing the charge there. I think. But Syracuse has not given up a man up goal yet, but no. sooner or later, all these penalties are going to hurt. Yeah. They, uh, Syracuse has kind of uh, stopped. They were in the beneficiaries early of the man up. Now they're giving them up. And once again, now Carolina 
working on the outside. And they got a man in the middle by the goalie. Now he moves back off. And they run cutters from the top. Not even a good shot on goal, actually. Syracuse ball off a of Carolina stick. Five seconds left in the penalty, and assuming Syracuse is able to kill that five, Carolina will be 0 for 6 in man-up opportunities. Syracuse, excuse me, up by 3, 7 4. They are going to double the ball. He just sprints over. No problem for Fietta well, getting it up Well, they doubled him there. He's got to get rid of the ball. There's too many blue jerseys on white there. A little sloppy. There's that check from Doyle. There's a check from Lockwood. And that call goes against Charlie Lockwood. A little high. A little high on the check. And you see uh, if they call. Let's see. The... That's not the one. That was Doyle's check. But uh, Charlie Lockwood's going to sit for 30 seconds for pushing. And once again, well, this is a sixth man up opportunity now for Carolina. You know, I remember last year early, they were averaging 10, 11 penalties a game. They were in double figures. But uh, that's something that you can't do. As you said, uh, eventually something's going to happen. Let's see what Syracuse does. Green feeds, yeah, right there. They changed it up a little bit. They snuck number 12 from behind, Turnbull. So that brings him back to within two, 6.28 left. Watch Turnbull. See, he was on green. Now he, he fakes, and you see him come right from behind. They could not slide over. Somebody missed him on a slide. Watch him again. Here's Turnbull. Sneak shot. 6.28 left in the first half. Syracuse leading 7-5. Wingman gets that ball for Carolina. Tar Heels Spears. trying to cut it to one. No, oh, he does. Jude Collins. He Bound just, shot, beat Rozier. Yeah, he beat Rozier. I don't think he was ready for the shot. I don't think he think, thought it was coming so quickly. Watch. Collins just a couple of cradles. Cranks. Nobody on his stick, and uh, his weight was off. Rozier was not able to step up into that ball, and Collins comes up with goal number one. So it's 7-6. And in a span of 11 seconds, Syracuse saw a three-goal lead reduced to one. Yep, one of them on a penalty. Carolina leading the faceoffs 8-5, make it 9-5. And it seemed even more lopsided than that. Yeah, it seemed like a while before they had one. Carolina trying to tie it up. We'll check Beardsley. There's 47. We're gonna. He's on the man with the ball, Lerman. Oh, Beardsley's down behind the cage. He gets up. Gets up limping. Langoff, I should say. He was on Langoff number four, but I was watching him and he went down and he's back up. Lots of running, and when you get a lot of running, you need a lot of depth. You want to get in your, I don't want to say your second or third midfields because they only have one, one midfield. They, he says he just used his names. They're going to let Rozier bring it up on a clear. Oh, just touched, but they get the ball over to Colsey. Rozier admits he's not as comfortable doing that as Chris Saran was. Saran developed it into an art, I think. Bad pass again, forcing it inside. Carolina looking to tie. 520 left in the first half. Somebody trying to get to the hole behind the back shot. A creative attempt by Mark Phillips. Well, they, they didn't have anybody in the hole. They were trying to get down there, and Phillips figured that he could had an open alley for the behind the back shot. Beardsley is in, and he's on number four Langoff.
Five minutes left in the half. Syracuse up 7-6. Shot goes wide. Penalty. So that's going to be a 30-second hold. On Schmidt. Called for holding. Penalty number seven. Let's see what they do. Last time, they went extra man. They put, uh, they snuck number 12 from behind. Seems like Carolina has been man up the entire second quarter. It does. It seems like that, doesn't it? Score tied in the second quarter at two apiece. Syracuse leading overall 7-6. Now watch Turnbull. He went to him. There he is. Comes from behind. They slid over and picked him up. Wittick with the interception. Wittick, you're going to draw some blue. Smiley. Fires up field. Fietta trying to scoop up the loose ball. Fietta does. Offside. So... Now there's a non-serve penalty that, that takes away your momentum. So Syracuse committing a lot of penalties, some of them of the first season variety, some of them difficult to on the uh, pushing and holding. So Syracuse gonna take a timeout. Syracuse using its second and final timeout of the first half, both called in this quarter. I think penalties has to be the major topic of conversation. Yeah, I would I would say that that has been a problem. And as you uh, as you commit those, as you said, for a while they had a good stream going, but it's just a matter of time. And they had changed one and snuck Turnbull around and uh, and got that one. And then what, ten seconds later they got a non penalty goal, but that really changed the, the complexion of the game. It brought them from with down three to down by one. Not only that, but it has to exhaust your defenseman and your goalie. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, this is his goalie's first game. You don't want to, it's bad enough you got to face him when you're playing 10-on-10. Uh, 10 10. You don't want to have him facing a, an extra man situation so much as uh, you can bet this uh, crowd knows. A great crowd here for opening day. And if you have any comments on our coverage of Syracuse University Sports, Please write us. There's the address, Super Sports, Adelphia Communications, 500 South Salina Street, Syracuse, and the zip is 13202. Last year, Syracuse averaged about 6,000 fans per home game. Biggest crowd last year for the final home game of the regular season against Johns Hopkins, nearly 10,000 Yep. in the crowd for that one. So, Carolina ball... 422 left, Syracuse up by one, and that man has got to be thinking about things like, as you mentioned, the penalties. We've talked about them. Some of them are, are you know, as you look at a season, you'll say, well, that was a good penalty. You know, it was aggressive. Some are not good, and uh, you got to sort them out. But I, I tell you, no matter what variety they've had, they've had too many so far. Nearly twice as many as North Carolina. Syracuse still leads 7-6. Brian Wade to Usman Green. Oh, Green with a great fake, and it looked like the Syracuse player hurt his knee. Whoa, that looked like a blowout for a minute there. That was Toby Price. Price. Yeah, Toby Price pops back up, and he appears to be okay. You got that uh, knee guard on. You got to wonder. He went down like a shot. Price has one of the seven Syracuse goals. Jason Wade. Wittick, number 45, watches him. Nice Ah. move by Wade. Back to Ryan Wade. Ball's loose. Batted forward and handled by the Tar Heels. One of the things they were doing, they were running kind of an isolation over on the left-hand side and then were making a move and then looking to dish the ball off after they got doubled. Let's see. Usman, left-handed shot. Saved Saved by Rozier. Price back to Rozier. Beardsley over the shoulder upfield to Schmidt. 
Heinz Schmidt takes it himself. Charlie Lockwood said, go ahead, it's clear, but he's going to need some help. Carolina doing a nice job of covering Syracuse players. They're really making it difficult to get the good, easy pass. Syracuse got a hold while they get a defenseman back and see who they can get over. They're going to make a change. Is that Fietta coming in? Fietta will come in. The ball is rolled back to Fietta. The junior from Jordan Elbridge. Watched by Usman Green. Fietta forward to Matt Doyle. Doyle to the freshman, Rob Cavavick. Now it's Charlie Lockwood. And Dave Signor. Lockwood has scored once. Matt Doyle out of Elmont. Spinning several times. Takes the shot, fires wide, and Jim Morrissey is back for Syracuse. You know, we, we've got Carolina with only one save, seven goals. Seems you've got to be able to take some good shots on it, but they have... Right, Carolina takes a timeout, but I was going to say it's been uh, it's the kind of situation where if you can't get a shot on the guy, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference how many saves he has or does not have. In that second quarter, they were not able to, to, to run much offensively. 157 left in the half. Syracuse hasn't scored for about seven minutes. Dave Clarman has to be pleased with the way his guys have played. They have gone over after the ground ball with alacrity. They're up to, what, 20 to 16. Uh, Syracuse still in the lead, 21 to 16. But as you said, I think the key ones uh, they seem to come up with. Like it's some of the see people what the here in the Carrier is. Dome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow they're expecting 27,000 for basketball against Georgetown. Certainly not that many here today, but I would guess. I thought you were going to say 27 inches of snow. <laughs> <laughs> we always expect that. <laughs> well, it is spring, isn't it? It's lacrosse season. What would lacrosse season be without an opening burst of snow? They don't have to worry about snow where Clarman and company come from. So, it was a timeout by Carolina. Syracuse will bring the ball in, and Morrissey 8 will bring it in. He'll be guarded by John Fox from Carolina, number 30. There's your ground ball statistic. And there's a key one right there. Syracuse will not get an offensive opportunity on that. Hit the post. Schmidt Go. has it for Syracuse. Goalie's best friend, huh? Colsey. Interference. It's all, you know, the action gets so fast and furious, you know, you go over to play body position and you've interfered with somebody like on a pick in basketball, and that's what happened to Carolina, and they make the long pass. Syracuse does over to Smith. And he steps over. I think uh, Carolina's midfield defense has done a great job of, of putting the ball down. Now there's another one. Let's see what they get. It's got to be a, probably a hold. Doesn't care for the call, but uh, Jude Collins is going to sit for 30. That's a, that's a little hold right there. He's lucky that that was all the... All he got. So Syracuse, man up number four. Yeah. Thirty-second opportunity comes with 101 left in the half. Look at that discrepancy. This is Syracuse's fourth man up, twice as many for Carolina. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. Dom Finn with a great look. Nice what a save. save by Lerman. Nice save and. A little tiptoe through the crease cost Syracuse the ball, but that was a great play. They just got stopped on it. That was Ryan a great Eisenberg play by Lerman. Took the shot. Right, watch him come across. He's one on one. Hit him right down by the stick on the handle. Syracuse a little contesting this ball at midfield a little bit better now. Nice move. And look out for the Tar Heels. Ball loose in front, and it bounces away. That was Spears who did such a good job for Carolina. 
bringing the ball down. Took three or four shots. Not knocked off his. Carolina track. trying to tie in the last seconds of the first half. He's in the crease. Rozier showing some emotion with nine seconds left in the half. Yeah, that was a yeah. I know he was in there. Now you want to be careful. Don't give up a cheap one. You're up by one. Let's go in the same way. Up by one. Shot. Save. So after a fast and furious first quarter, play settled down a bit in the second. Syracuse led by one at the end of one and still does at the end of the half. There's your halftime score. Syracuse 7, North Carolina 6. At the half, Syracuse leads North Carolina 7-6. Let's take a look at some of the other first half numbers. One of the uh, big problems with Syracuse, of course, was the man-up situation. You see it very clearly right there. Twice as many for Carolina. Of course, uh, they, they only gave up one goal. But on the other hand, that takes away from your offense. And Syracuse spent a lot of time in the second quarter playing man-down defense. Ground balls are pretty even. We talked about the fact that Carolina seemed to come up with the key ones when they needed to. Saves, seven for Syracuse and three, seven for Rozier, three for Lerman. And shots, 28-18, a key right there. Ten more shots and, of course, clear is even at 17 apiece. But Syracuse has got to, I think, play a little bit less in the penalty department. Mm -hmm. And uh, both teams have been scoreless the last six minutes, 17 seconds. So we shall see what happens as they get ready to face off. Syracuse uh, had rallied after giving up some early face-offs, but uh, Edge goes to Carolina. Already there's going to be a flag. I think Syracuse is going to get this one. Signor winning that face-off. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be Wade is going to sit down for a minute as he did a cranium cleaver here. Watch, right? There it is. No, it wasn't Wade at all. It was 23. Yep, it was Sweeney. So they are down a man. Syracuse Long pass out on top. Flag down from the bench area. <laughs> Dom Finn to Roy Colsey. And Finn is behind the cage as Syracuse holds on to the ball. They look at procedure against Carolina. And he must have come in. Yeah, he, he must have come in and, and gone off before somebody else came off. So that, that's going to cost uh, 30 more seconds to Carolina. Neither team has looked real proficient in its man-up opportunities. Well, again, I think that's part of it, that you've only gone man-up against your generally your man-down defense, although they say that the Carolina's had some good scrimmages. Shot, save! Lockwood took the shot. Lehrman there to snatch it out of the air. Syracuse has not applied much pressure in its rides. They are. It looks like they are going to do so this but they're going to have another penalty. This is not going to be an offside. I think this is going to be a slash. They're going to have to stop this shot. There, that'll do it. Let's see if it's a... could be a slash. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So it will be. But Doyle on the slash. Colsey. Colsey. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was Colsey. Played one minute in the third quarter. Syracuse still leading 7-6. And right back where they were in the second quarter, yeah. man down. Ninth opportunity for North Carolina. They have only scored once in the man up. That one man up goal was scored by Merrill Turnbull. Right there. He the had man. the ball briefly. And they got two guys behind now. Turnbull was behind by himself. Now they swing it around. Ryan Wade swinging it, shot by Spears, bounces wide. Carolina maintains possession. Of course, the key in this is the movement away from the ball, the offensive movement. The men able to get open so that they can uh, they can move away from the ball and get open because they are up one man. And, of course, Syracuse playing a zone, tries to get the sticks and stop the passing lanes and shore up that. But now they pass back and forth. Oh, that's a shot high. Brendan Carey fired the shot like it uh, slipped out of the cross a bit didn't have that much on it and fired it well high at the crossbar 
Patopoulos with a takeaway for Syracuse. Patopoulos wants to get that ball and get it downfield. But... Trying to find Fietta. Chad Smith knocking it That's forward. Off of Carolina. I think that was off of uh, Green, off his foot. Right in front of the Carolina bench, Syracuse will get the ball, and that penalty not quite up. So let's see what they do with the ball, with the man with the ball. They're going to play him real tight. And take it away. Dom Finn trying to get it back, and he does. Syracuse back to full strength. And another flag down. That Brescia did a nice job for Carolina. There's a slash now for Carolina as they pick up the uh, penalty situation. There, there it was. Yeah, there you go. That was a, that Tim was a Price. Sandy slash by Price. Been a long drought for Syracuse. The Orangemen did not score after the 8.51 mark of the second quarter. We're at the 12.45 mark of the third. Nice, able to double team the ball, man down. They got two guys on the ball, then another penalty. Matt Doyle's furious. Well, that's going to be uh, this. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that was a push. Can't push in the back. So 30 seconds. This puts the Tar Heels in double figures. That releases their man. They get the ball in the clearing zone, the Syracuse's defensive zone. So that clears the penalty box. So they are now a man up. Usman Green. Tar Heels working around. Ryan Wade back to Green. Carey. Tried to pass it across the whole zone there, and who was it? Beardsley intercepted it. He's been quiet, but his man hasn't done much offensively. He makes a dish off to Lockwood. Lockwood cranks it up and scores. Charlie Lockwood with his second goal of the game. And Syracuse leads 8-6. Let's see what this is now. Another penalty hits. <laughs> Lockwood gets his second goal, and that's going to be a procedure call, throwing the stick. Beardsley set the whole thing up, though. Give him credit. He made a nice move, evaded everybody, and then made the nice pass, and Lockwood, the burner, up top, pass Lerman. Watch the pass. There it is. So that'll be an assist. Should be an assist for Beardsley. And back in the penalty box for throwing a stick. Syracuse, number nine, Fietta. And Carolina get the ball right back. So this penalty number 11 for Syracuse. Chad Aggressive. Smith whacking at Ryan Wade. Wade hung the stick a little bit, forces him up. Syracuse so playing a very aggressive man down defense. Good stick work there by Beardsley to deflect that pass. One, two, three. No, they're even. Even. I was going to say, they were they were playing pretty aggressive for a team down a man. Come on, boys. Come on, minis. Turn around and play defense. Who's on? Get inside. you got to short. Clearly here, the Carolina bench there. And that head coach Dave Carmen saying, there's a shot and a goal. Jason Wade with his third goal. There's Wade just on a sweep, left-handed all the way. Now they jump, but they couldn't get in front of the stick, and he goes offside from the goalie. And Rozier not able to stop it. Got a stick over, but couldn't get on the ball. So Wade up with his third. 
eight to seven. Sophomore Jason Wade having a terrific opening game of the 94 season. It's got to be a push against Carolina, so Syracuse will get the ball. No, no penalty in terms of time served, no possession. Same thing with the stick. It uh, was just a possession call. Talked to Carolina. Oh, as the ball down. At the half, uh, they had 10 more shots than Syracuse. Let's see what, uh, they get another one off here. Fast break, says Spear. Yes, wide, wide of the goal. And Beardsley was closest to the ball when it went out of bounds. Now well, Beardsley, as we said, has been pretty pretty much quiet. He has, not, uh, he has been on number four, Greg Langhoff, who has not done much for Carolina in the scoring department, but he got an assist on the last goal. Here's Lockwood in an unsettled situation. Lockwood with a spin move. Boss the angle and holds the ball. Great look. Donegan scores. Donegan saw that. He was signaling that he wanted the ball. And Lockwood, great vision, saw him standing over there. They have been doubling Lockwood when they can get a chance. And uh, he saw Donegan cross the crease. And he makes a cross cage feed and a one hopper. By Lerman gives Syracuse a two-goal lead with 10-18 in the third period. Casey Donegan's first goal this season. He had eight goals and six assists last year. Syracuse leading 9-7. Carolina's only lead was 1-0. There's a shot. shot that's wide of the mark by Matt Doyle. Back up. Incidentally, Syracuse had to Fotopoulos it on the wings. They're getting a little better wing penetration on those face-offs. Syracuse Donegan has it behind. Need to make one correction. Carolina also led 3-2 at one point. Syracuse's biggest lead was three goals. Oh, should have gotten rid of the ball, I think. Just too many Carolina blue jerseys on him and uh, not able to dump the ball off. Now it's a Unsettled break here for Carolina. Shot goes wide. Spencer Deering there for North Carolina. Shot taken by Merrill Turnbull. Look at the shots by period. North Carolina dominating in shots in the second, but the goals in that quarter, two apiece. Schmidt uh, down there on a trip it cost him a minute let's see what happens there's the it's with the stick and that'll cost you a minute so they're number 11 man up opportunity or 10 we'll check here for One minute penalty. It must make, if it's tripping, it's a minute. I don't know what he called. Nine seven Syracuse. Nice check. Christian Fotopoulos supplying the hit. Yeah. Riddick with that hit. Has some pushing and shoving on the far sideline. Fotopoulos and Jason Wade going at it. Face mask to face mask. It ends up Syracuse ball. You see the con contest uh, for the sideline. There's a hit. And then the ball knocked back. That was Riddick. And then watch right here. That's something you don't want to do too often. You want to bring those hands up. You can get there and jaw, but especially with the amount of penalties Syracuse has been drawn. Okay, so Syracuse now comes in. They're even. Good check. Carolina, Lang off, and then whistle. Offside. Offsides against number 12 from Carolina. 
So they're going to call that on Turnbull. So Syracuse will get a man up opportunity. Turnbull doesn't. <laughs> so I don't know what I did. Here's the man up goal. Syracuse, one of six. This is their seventh. Both teams, uh, a lot of penalties. Where the ball is. They're going to bring the ball in here. They get it down there on the right side and uh, they bring it way out. Charlie Lockwood walking over to speak briefly with the official. Syracuse puts it in play with 8.40 left in the third quarter. Rob Tavavit to Matt Doyle. Tom Finn. Now Ray Colsey. I checked that Roy Colsey. Morrissey. To Colsey. Shot Not wide. Long shot by Colsey, number three. Good backup. Now they're even. So it's now man to man. Get the ball, one hop. Dom Finn. Finn great at working one on one. Syracuse giving him that opportunity. Nice job, nice got stripped. Uh, Sweeney, 23, took the ball away. Nice look. Great left handed pass. Jude Collins elected not to shoot. Saved by the new Syracuse goalie, Alex Rozier. Oh, a little poor passing there at the midfield, and they lose the ball. And an unsettled situation for Carolina. Beardsley, the defenseman, back upfield, and they, uh, they're they going to play with some short sticks. Ah, oh, that's a long hop. That'll go Carolina ball. Good back up by Langoff, but Beardsley way out, up by the midfield line, is back now. Sophomore Jude Collins took that shot. Collins has one goal. Syracuse leading 9-7. Smiley in for Syracuse. That was an open shot. And Rozier was there. John Spears fired the shot. This is Merrill Turnbull. Seven minutes left in the third. Carolina slowing this game down and uh, going to run a very deliberate offense. See if they get a little one-on-one -on -one here. So now they've got uh, the ball behind Spears with Charlie Lockwood on him. There's Spears a double. Ah, fires save. Rozier. That one fired at his feet, and he made a nice save. And a great pass upfield to Charlie Lockwood. Lockwood evades a defender, spots the open man. Fietta, I check that, Morrissey. Good job. A bit. Good job of not forcing that mm -hmm. ball, Dan. Behind the back shot, covered up by Donegan. And the out of bounds by Colsey. But, you know, I think in the first half they were forcing a little bit, and they settled down, didn't force it. As a consequence, they got one shot off, and they have the ball back. On the backup. This is Fietta. Still looking to feed in there on that crease. They're looking for Donegan. Mm -hmm. Donegan is elusive. He sneaks in there when you least expect it. That's Doyle. Yeah. Great pass. It's a great. As soon as they jumped him, as soon as they jumped him, he got rid of the ball. Jim Morrissey with a goal. It's his first off the beautiful feed from Matt Doyle. Watch Schreiber and Fox. There's Schreiber, 27. Fox jumps. Ball's gone. He left his man open. He did a nice job of jumping, but it was just a perfect release. He saw it out of the corner of his eye. As soon as he got jumped, he got the ball off to Morrissey, and Morrissey put it in the hole. The best time to use one of those double teams is when you can attack when the player has his back to you. That time, Doyle had already turned, so he really had a good look at the second defender coming at him. That's uh, Wade with the ball, got the face off. 
Oh. Ryan Wade. Just a sweep. Mm -hmm. Guarded by number nine, Mark Fietta. Let's check it out. Watch him. See, there's nine. There's Fietta. Watch. Move. You got to be able to try to get on a stick. At least make me. He does a jump shot. Perhaps savable. Let's, you're going to see it again. He had, he had vision on it. It was a good shot. No doubt about it. First goal for Ryan Wade. His brother Jason has three. So it's back to two now as Syracuse is up 10-8. Took a while for Ryan to get on the board. He was a first-team All-American last year. White's moving. That would be Ferguson from Syracuse. So that's going to cost them the faceoff, uncontested. Carolina with it. Syracuse leading by two goals. Good hit by Fatopoulos. Oh, no. Nice. Chad Smith. Smith. He came across, jumped in the air, and knocked the ball off his leg. After Rozier had left the cage. Oh, what a goal. Greg Langhoff. who had been shut down with a beautiful move to make it a one-goal game. All that movement, and Langhoff, who has been guarded by Beardsley in an unsettled situation, watch what happens. Langhoff's behind. Now that's Smith on him. They double, triple, he doesn't lose the ball. Now out comes the goalie, and as soon as you come out, you better get there and get the ball. If you don't, you're going to give up a goal. So after Syracuse had scored two quick goals... North Carolina answers with two, and it's 10-9 Syracuse. Carolina wins another faceoff. Jude Collins. 4.49 left in the third quarter. The Tar Heels looking to tie. Fourteen to eight in the faceoff department, and when you control the faceoffs, you can control the action of the game. And when Syracuse's offense has to play defense, that's what you want. Rozier picks up the ball, fires up field, and Dom Finn. He's all by himself, though. Finn eludes a defender. Eric Knoss couldn't quite control it in his cross for Syracuse, and North Carolina has it. I give Carolina credit. They have played good midfield defense, and they have been able to control the ball, control the action by getting the faceoffs. Now it's kind of an isolation out here as they bring way over all by himself, number 21, Durkee. Passing, getting a lot crisper here in the third quarter. Long pass. That was Tobin. They get the ball back to Terry. And they work it around on the outside. Mm -hmm. Back behind to Langhoff, who scored the last goal. Mike Smiley on him, the big six foot six kid out of West Jennings. Now it's back to Sanders. Inside of three minutes left in the third. Brendan Carey, Rick Beardsley watching him. This is what they want to do: take the take the time. Run a controlled offense and hope to be able to get it by the rookie goalie and then tie it up. Langhoff. Smiley. Smiley. Shot goes wide. Not only is he tall, he's wide, uh, Smiley. Tough to get a, a shot by him and they went wide. Syracuse leading 10-9. Right now the first quarter is the difference. Pretty much what you'd expect between the top two ranked teams in the preseason. 
So Syracuse will defend Brendan Carey with Beardsley. They get the ball back up to the midfield. North Carolina with 12 more shots in the game. There's a save. Rozier coming up big again to keep Syracuse on top by one. They've just been running some sweeps with some picks, and they're able to get guys open. There's a man open. Low shot save. Rozier again. Penalty flag. Let's see what we get now. Beardsley. Unnecessary roughness, so that's going to be a minute. There's Beardsley comes in late. Yeah, he got that right off the body. Bounced it high. So, Beardsley, uh, very fit this year. Not that he hasn't been in the past, but looks stronger. Looks like he spent some time in the weight room. He's been doing a great job, but he is down for a minute. And Carolina looks to tie in the last two minutes of the third quarter. 12th man-up opportunity for the Heels. They've only scored once. Pass in front, shot goes wide, Syracuse is back there. They have not been real effective on the man-up, but it has taken time away from the Syracuse offense, and they have not been able to run their style. And they have had some problems clearing. I think that Rozier is the guy that needs a little more experience. Gets the ball to Lockwood. Lockwood gets picked right there. Ryan That's Wade. That's a tough ride. Syracuse knocks it out of Wade's stick, and Syracuse has it. Charlie Lockwood racing upfield. Lockwood with a pass. Donegan behind the cage. Shot oh. fired. Sullivan missing high. That was a burner. Paul Sullivan, 21, took that shot. And Donegan has it. Last minute of the third quarter. They did a nice job there of getting his arm on it. Lerman did. Morrissey just missed. Matt Doyle got it back. Morrissey tries again and misses. Donegan was deepest. Syracuse still has it with 46 seconds left in the third. They got three shots off in about 10 seconds. Uh, it's something that they need to do. You got to. You can't score without shots, and you got to get them off. Morrissey had two of the shots. This is Morrissey. Charges forward. Lockwood. That. that was Fietta. Now it's Lockwood. Lockwood to Donegan. Oh, there was somebody open on the crease. They Sullivan. They couldn't hit him. Syracuse a lot more movement now. 20 seconds left in the quarter. Lockwood will take his time. Now they're taking their time. An offset kind of a... Playing for one to steal the basketball turn. Eight seconds left in the quarter. Lockwood. Donegan with three seconds left in the quarter. And Syracuse fails to get off that final shot. And the quarter comes to an end with Syracuse still up by one. Syracuse led by one after the first, by one at the half, and by one after three. There's your score, Syracuse 10 and North Carolina 9. Dan Hort and Dale Drypolcher at the Dome. We head to the fourth quarter. Syracuse still up by one, 10 to 9. Well, now this is when uh, one uh, conditioning can come into factor, although everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. But uh, now faceoffs become critical every time because you've got to really get every chance you can if you're Carolina down by one. But they have been controlling the faceoffs. Ground balls real even. Save Syracuse 11 to five. Shots 43 to 31. That is a, a real disparity right there. And Syracuse has had a little bit of trouble clearing, kind of early season clearing problems. I think Carolina won that faceoff. The Tar Heels lead that category 14 to seven. Looking for the tie. Great opportunity. Absolutely. And the Point. shot by Jude Collins went wide. Point blank by Collins, but uh, he couldn't convert. Yeah, he won't get a better opportunity. Carolina with 13 more shots. Syracuse still leads 10-9. <laughs> 
the penalties have even up a little bit with the amount of penalties and the amount of shots. That's one of the reflections of the penalties, I think. They've gotten more shots off because Syracuse's offense has been playing a lot of defense. Nice check. Chad Smith knocking it away, but recovered by Mark Phillips. Phillips gave it out to Spear up on top. That's They've been running some simple sweeps and doing some picks and then passing back. Good hit by Beardsley. Smith has the ball. Chad looking for a short stick to give it up to. Did not failure to advance. I just looked up there and I saw him touching his hat. It is yep. failure to advance. Have to get it out of the first quarter of the field in 10 seconds, and Syracuse did not do it. That's Spear on Patopoulos. Patopoulos, the big stick midfielder, who will also play defense. These guys are interchangeable parts, I think. Spencer Deering oh. breaks free. Bounce shot, a little off the mark, but picked up behind by Spears. Patopoulos knocks the ball loose. Schmid picks it up. He loses it momentarily. Got to get some help. There he gets a short stick. Colsey. And Roy Colsey runs it up for Syracuse. Rams right into the Carolina player and comes up with a ball. Crowd loves it. 11,000 looking on here at the Dome. He's going to get stuck. Colsey hammered from behind. Penalty flag down on the field. Technical foul. Let's see what uh, the hit looked like. There's Colsey. <laughs> he looked like a linebacker there, didn't he? He brought the arm up a little bit. Well, Just... Assistant coach John Desco compares him to a fullback, yeah. and I think that would have been Gerald Johnston style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dave Clarman wants to know that. You can't do that. Figure out the game. <laughs> Langhoff, meanwhile, sits for 30. Syracuse, I think they're eighth man up opportunity. We'll so. see if they can capitalize. They've only scored once in the man up. Lockwood shot is wide. Matt Doyle behind the cage for Syracuse. Long shot. Syracuse not afraid to work it around, but when they get it out there to laser, he'll take the shot. Colsey finds the open man. Doyle shoots. Yes. And he scores. Not looked able to like, control it. Yep, it looked like Lehrman had it, and it squirted through. Syracuse leads 11-9. But ain't over till the ball stops rolling, I guess, right? Let's see. They just make a quick pass. Bounce off a North Carolina stick. Look at this. And twice off a North Carolina stick. The defenseman knocked it in. Third goal for Matt Doyle. He becomes the first Syracuse player to have the hat trick. Tobin, or Fox, is the guy that knocked it in for Carolina off his stick. Face off, rolling toward the sideline. Carolina saves it by right to Syracuse. Down again. And he fires across the field to Jim Morrissey. Lockwood's open in the middle. Lockwood could not control the pass, but Syracuse gets it back. Doyle in front. And Lehrman comes up with it. Doyle got hurt. Colsey with a hit. Ball's loose. Another big Syracuse hit by Fietta. Colsey has it. Well, uh, offside will be called. It'll be offside against Carolina. You can see the fatigue for Roy Colsey. He was all over the field. Well, these guys, yeah, he's starting to, there he is right there, getting his wind back. Colsey part of the big contingent from Yorktown High in the Syracuse Ball Club. Dom Finn, Roy Colsey, freshman Paul Carcatetta, who we haven't seen yet, but we've heard a lot about. Freshman who's coming to the program. There's a shot that stopped. Rolls forward. Oh, Lerman loses it. He goes out the back and gets it. He just kind of cheaps it. Dangerous pass, but it was completed. And Carolina has it down by two. Jason Sanders. Now, this is one thing that Rozier's got to do. He's got to come up with a big save. If they take a shot, 
This is the quarter you've really got to, they all count now, even more so than the first three quarters when it's this close. John gotta, Spears with the ball, Roy Colsey looking on. Colsey relaxing a bit, giving Spears a little room to operate. Well, Colsey's got to be tired. Spears just kind of in isolation behind as they, now they run some cuts from up high. Looks like a double team. Lockwood leaves his man. Knight, that's the save. Rozier denying Jason Sanders. That's All a recovered big save. by Spencer Deering. Deering showing his speed. On Schmidt stayed with. A lot of time, so Carolina's going to be patient. They're trying to put somebody on the crease. They want to get a little bit of uh, Carolina blue in front of Rozier. Now they back off the crease. Schmidt with a takeaway. He's played great. He sure has. One of the tri-captains, and he has looked at today. Charlie Lockwood beats his man. Lockwood oh. in front. Doyle didn't have it. He took the phantom shot. Now it's Finn. Blocked before it got to the cage, but stolen by Colsey. Oh, there's a shot off of Carolina's stick. That'll be Syracuse ball. Boy, I'll tell you, a lot of unsettled action there. If you're a goalie, you got to be saying, where is that ball going? Please stop it. Let me get an angle here, guys. Clock running, 9.47 left. Carolina oh. with more shots. Syracuse with more goals. Charlie Lockwood with a hat trick. With the laser. Syracuse has opened up a three-goal cushion with 9.45 to go. That arrived there so quickly. He doesn't have, watch the goal mouth. Look at the angle. He's out maybe three yards, and oh. he just blows it, stick side by Lerman. Watch, boom. Was there a doubt? Charlie Lockwood with three goals. I believe he also has one assist. Lockwood and Matt Doyle with a hat trick for Syracuse. Carolina trying to answer quickly. Rozier there. Rozier seems to be, uh, and, and the tempo has picked up, the pressure's picked up. Now he's got a three goal lead. I understand that, but I think he seems to be playing with much more confidence in the fourth quarter than he did in the first two quarters. Mm -hmm. And he's also had played down a man a lot of this game. He's in double figures and saves. Kind of an auspicious debut mm -hmm. so far. A lot of time left. Three goals is not a big lead with nine minutes and a half left. Big hit applied by Syracuse. Ball loose. Oh, and there's was, a penalty on Whitaker. That wasn't. That wasn't. That was a. That was a dumb penalty. That's. That wasn't even close. Okay, Whitick is the guy. Watch. He just comes out and now. I mean, this is in front of the official. The ball. Just uh, not a not a good penalty. You know, you might say, well, what is a good penalty? Well, if he turned, or, you know, you had a chance for the ball. That was out in front of everybody, and that was just not a good penalty. So Syracuse will be man down once again, and. Rozier will have to, the man down defense has done a great job as they work the ball around. Got a man on the crease. They take him off. Turnbull is the guy to watch right there. You see all those sticks go up? They're trying to knock down the passing lanes. Now a little unsettled. All right, now they're even. Now you have to watch it. you got to make sure everybody's picked up. And the crowd applauds. One for 13. On man-up opportunities for Carolina. At even strength. That was stopped before it got through. I think the goalie got a stick okay. on it. Beardsley was there with him, but now it's a transition game. Matt Doyle looking for his fourth goal. He passes instead. Great stick for yes, and it goes it. over the line. That's yeah. a goal for Syracuse. Does not have to touch the net. All it's got to do is cross that little white line. I believe that'll go to Jim Morrissey. Nice transition. Good passing. Look pass to the wing. Donegan says, I'll look for the middle. Low shot. Watch the ball. Bounced over that, and then he got the ball back out. Had a spin on it, and then it came back out. But it crossed the white plane. Second goal for Jim Morrissey. 
And so. Syracuse has its biggest lead at four goals, 13 to nine. Three nothing in the fourth quarter. And a Roy big Simmons face-off. will love that. Big face off by been, Ferguson. Yep, the freshman Jody Ferguson has done an excellent job when given the opportunity on the faceoffs. You know, Coach Donnie said, you know, if, I, if something gets hot, I'll stick with him. But if not, I try a lot of different combinations. He said, I got four or five guys that can face off. So. And Kevin Donahue is kind of a specialist at teaching that on the Syracuse program. Looking at the uh, attack and midfield scoring for Syracuse, we thought that we might see a little bit more from the midfield, a little more experience, a little more chemistry, but it's just about evened up in that department. Seven goals for the middies and six for the attack, so... And now they're playing much better, much better defense. Syracuse gets it. Big hit on the sideline by Brian Eisenberg, number seven. Eisenberg from Marcellus. And draws uh, one of the biggest hands of this game. Not too far, about 10, 12 miles from the Carrier Dome. Not a, a, a lacrosse power, but of late playing very well mm -hmm. in the lacrosse department. Morrissey, who scored twice. Outside to Eisenberg. Now here's where you can take a little air out of the ball yourself. They take a shot and back up. But uh, you've got a four-goal lead. you got seven minutes left. Take your time. Run a settled offense. Let's see what they do. Donegan <laughs> using Doyle as a screen. So now Syracuse has opened it up in the fourth quarter. Charlie Lockwood beats his man, now pulls it back. He's a dangerous, obviously a dangerous shooter, but you know he's a great feeder too. Oh, he thought he had Tobin beaten, Fox beaten rather. Donegan shoots, bounce shot goes past the goal and Lockwood is there. Had an open shot at the goalie. Syracuse has gone with quite a few bounce shots against Lerman. What a the shot by Lockwood. Up. Charlie with his most spectacular goal yet of this game, and he has four goals in the opening game of the season. You know, and it's against Carolina. He was a second-team All-American two years ago. Watch it catch under the top pipe. Mm. Watch it ricochet down. See that? Right there, just under that top pipe. Great shot, and... I think Keith Drilling would like to prove himself being demoted to second team All-American last year. Has had a great game this year and that spectacular fashion right there. And Ferguson up with another. Got the face off, got the draw, lost it on a push. Bresci with the ball. Gives it off to Lerman. Now Beardsley up with a nice pass back to the goalie, and Syracuse heads the other way. Good pass. They got it upfield by Fotopoulos, and now Donegan takes it behind and settles it. Five thirty left. Syracuse up by five. Colsey with a spinning shovel shot. Good hustle by Donegan behind. He dove on this AstroTurf up by five goals. Check that was Morrissey. Morrissey with the ball. It's Fox on him, number 30. And he got himself in a the corner there. Oh! Penalty will go against Carolina. <laughs> that was a that was a sound penalty. <laughs> you, you, you know, see how it you, twisted Morris's yeah, helmet. Yeah, I thought it was his head for a minute, but no, it's just his helmet. Yeah, he took a shot. Listen. Oh my gracious! I don't know if we even had a special mic on that. <laughs> that was just a that was a skull crusher. North Carolina calls a timeout, 4.59 remaining, and a standing ovation from the 11,000 plus in attendance. Syracuse on top, 14 to nine.
Nice look at the crowd here in the Carrier Dome. Great place to play lacrosse, especially when there's 12 inches of snow outside. <laughs> this is Syracuse's only home game this month. Yeah, Syracuse, we don't see him again, do we? Hits the road and heads to Florida next week. And Syracuse will take on Yale in Florida next week. Our next telecast will be of the next home game. That's Syracuse against the defending Division Three national champs, Hobart. Now Division One, right? Forced to make that move. Yeah. Come on, 34. That's your team. Roy 3, Roy 4. <laughs> That's your team. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> He's grown a lot since yeah. the last season. Roy Four, that is. Yeah, that's right. Five minutes now. Play hard. Five minutes. Come on. Two. That's tough to keep a kid like that out for an entire afternoon. I know that. Look at the shots. Syracuse really coming on in the third and fourth quarter. Out shooting him 25-21. Not a great disparity, but... Uh, there had been a, a bigger disparity by 10 earlier by Carolina. As we said, that do a, a lot to Syracuse playing man down so often. Nice jump by Carolina's 23, Darren Sweeney. Beardsley comes up with it, fires up field. Nice catch by Doyle. Nice look. Yeah. But the ball deflected slightly by North Carolina. Yeah, it was a nice look. He was looking for Eisenberg. What the hell was that? That's a pass. Rob Cavavit, the freshman. To Brian Eisenberg. Now back to Charlie Lockwood. He leads Syracuse with four goals today. Dom Finn, who has scored one. To Matt Doyle, who has three. Back to Lockwood for his fifth. Shoots it wide. Ball behind once again. Get the ball out to Finn. Finn looks to set. Now they're even. Finn's pass leads to the easy goal for Brian Eisenberg. What a beautiful pass. That was just a great pass. That's why the guy's an All-American, you know, and you won't see it if you look in the in the newspaper to get an assist, but you don't see the beauty of it. And that's exactly what it was. Beautiful assist, and Eisenberg pumps in goal number 15. Did you check out the uh, four-leaf clover on his helmet? A lot of four-leaf clovers, and also the, the number 10 uh, signifying uh, a teammate, uh, about 30 years old, uh, taken away from his team, Tommy Nims from uh, West Genesee High School, lived up in Watertown and uh, died recently. And to honor him, they had put that on their helmets. A nice gesture for a kid who did a lot for Syracuse University lacrosse. Syracuse with a six goal advantage. It's 5 0 in the fourth quarter. This is a program that takes great pride in its ability to pull away in the fourth. And that has certainly been the case today. And Syracuse still hustling up by six goals. Charlie Lockwood, incidentally, has equaled his career high with four goals in this game. He has done that twice in his career. Previously, this is the third time. Carolina in the man up situation. Alex Rozier Got a denying second. the shot again. Just, just checking, Tommy Nims, an All-American in 84 and 85 for Syracuse. Oh, jeez. Fatopoulos. Oh. Unsettled situation for Syracuse. Bounce nice shot save. saved by Lerman. Chad Smith somehow pokes it in. That's very difficult to do with a big stick. To have the control to pick up a bouncing ball like that and flip it in. 
almost impossible, and Smith makes it 16-9 Syracuse. A little bit of a discussion here. A lot of a little bad blood here between the blue and the white. There's a there's a push at the end. You saw that. And then after that, it just kind of degenerated. Watch this. There's the push right there. That's not what they called. It's going to be unsportsmanlike. So Fox in there for Carolina, and we'll straighten it out for you as Bill Ellis comes to the side. North Carolina has gone more than a quarter now without scoring. Carolina's last goal came at the 4.56 mark of the third, and we have 2.34 left in the game. So a timeout. Carolina is going to take a timeout. Two guys sitting for unsportsmanlike, one from each side. So that'll be everybody down a minute. So each man, each team will be down a man, but uh, nobody will have an advantage as they'll both be non-releasable. It's a tough game. People get pushed around a lot. <laughs> Sometimes they lose their tempers. I think Syracuse was, they just quoted the paper saying last year we were a little concerned about the fact that uh, we lost last year. We wanted to kind of get a little bit of revenge. So Fotopoulos is... Uh, out for Syracuse for a minute. Well, Syracuse opened last season with a loss to North Carolina. They wound up meeting again in the final game of the year. No guarantee that uh, they'll meet again, but certainly two of the programs that you anticipate being in the hunt. Well, Roberts you, in the final four. You look at Carolina and Hopkins and Syracuse, uh, just and in Princeton, of course, winning mm -hmm. one year and uh, back again last year in the final four. Hopkins and Princeton have the most returning talent of the four teams that went to the final four last year, or at least the most experienced returnees. I guess you can't say talent because we've seen how the guys have filled in for Syracuse today. Virginia also figures to have a very good team this season. Syracuse up by seven with a under three, about 2.23 left. Beardsley on Spears. Beardsley not afraid to poke his head in there. He's quietly played a very good game. Mm -hmm. When I say quietly for him, especially quietly, but uh, he has, uh, he's really done a good job. He was guarding Langhoff, I believe, for most of the game. And... Uh, I think he got one goal, and I don't. I mm -hmm. think it was an unsettled situation. It, it's similar to what they say about officials. They do a good job if you don't notice them. I think in Carolina's case, they tried to keep it away from Beardsley because he's so good at the takeaway, and that's the best indication of all of how good he is. Carolina's changed goalies, and uh, Rocco DeAndrea is in. Well, you know, you got to give. You got to give Casey Dunnigan <laughs> another goal. I was going to say you got to give him another goal, but. You got to get you now. They're they're waving this off. Uh, they're going to wave this off on a procedure penalty. So this will not be a goal on the bench side. So the goal's wiped out. Watch Donigan. Nice look though. So DeAndrea saves himself because Syracuse illegal procedure called off. There's Rocco DeAndrea, the junior from. Yorktown High School. Yeah. Probably a former teammate of Colsey and Finn and Carcaterra. Yorktown, one of the significant programs in New York State. Mm -hmm. oh. Shot in the goal. Fired quickly there by Jason Wade. He has his fourth goal of the game. Four for Wade. He's played a great game. And he's been able to do it. Watch, watch how quickly he gets rid of this. But they go over his head. As soon as he knows that he's beaten the defenseman. In that particular case, it was Fotopoulos went over his head. Watch, and misses. He gets rid of the ball. Well, that ends the attempt at a fourth quarter shutout, but Syracuse still comfortably in front, 16 to 10 with 138 remaining. So you look at Rozier. He has, I think, weathered a storm, and uh, 
and played pretty well, especially as it went on. Faceoffs, a little bit of a problem early. I think that's another thing that gets better as you work through the season. And uh, Carolina's up by seven, now make it eight as they get this face off also. You know that Coach Donahue will be working on that. Good hustle by Rozier out of the cage. Eleven five oh six attendance. Oh, nice body save. Rozier using his chest. One ten remaining. Good recovery there by Brian Eisenberg, who has one goal. Did not advance. Did not get the ball across into the attack zone there in the... Now, now not only is there a failure to advance, now there's another penalty on Syracuse, bringing us the grand total in time served penalties. Two. Let's see, we'll check this. Number 14. So 14 is the penalty situation. Syracuse is now down for 30 seconds. Carolina has scored one goal. Amazing. Another body Rozier. save. He Rozier. Picked it off himself like an ant. He trapped it between <laughs> his arm and his body. Yep. 35 seconds to go. Wittick shoots, saved by DeAndrea. Beardsley. Usman Green hit by Beardsley, but Green gets it forward. <laughs> Brendan Carey takes the pass, now delivers the pass. Rozier again. What a debut. Well, he's up to 18 saves, and uh, there's still uh, 10 seconds or so left. <laughs> Paul Carcaterra scores in his Syracuse debut. It's 17-10, Orange Men. Carcaterra coming down the right side. He gets a pass from Schmidt, and he just puts a 20-yard shot down low, and Hans Schmidt should get an assist on that. So... Round one, we'll go to the orange. That's right, and you know what they say when they shake hands. Well, see you later. See a Memorial Day weekend, perhaps. That's going to do it. It was a nail-biter for three quarters. Syracuse led by one after the first, after the second, and after the third. Then the Orangemen scored the first six goals of the fourth quarter to pull it out. Syracuse wins its season opener. 17-10, the final from the Dome. Dan Horton, Dale Drypolcher back at the Dome. Syracuse opens the season in impressive faction, uh, fashion, beating North Carolina 17-10. Our STX player of the game, the newcomer in between the pipes for Syracuse, junior goalie Alex Rozier. 18 saves in... Uh... He had the body save, picks this off, put it in the stick. Did a nice job for a guy who's just going to get used to playing with the big guys. 18 saves for Rozier, and in honor of being our STX player of the game, STX will donate a full set of lacrosse gear to a local high school. So Syracuse opens the season with a win, pulling away in the fourth quarter to beat North Carolina 17-10. to Number one beats number two in game number one. Don't forget our next telecast, Syracuse's next home game, coming up next month. Syracuse taking on Hobart here at the Dome. Check your local listings for the time of the telecast nearest you. A reminder that this has been a presentation of Super Sports, a production of Adelphia Cable Communications. For Dale Drypolcher, I'm Dan Horde saying thanks for watching and good night from the Carrier Dome.